Our first webinar is with our team for the Avis MEP, which is the multiple employer plan for your school's 403 plan. And this is a, a way to, um, it, excuse me, this is treated um, like one large plan with many unrela unrelated employers, allowing us to pool our purchasing power. So now I'm going to turn this over to our team so that they can introduce themselves and their roles and their respective firms. So Amika, do you want to get it started? Yeah, I'd be happy to kick it off. Thank you, Yanni. Thank you, Advis team, for having us. My name is Amika and Sunwood Farmer. I am a director at TIAA on our multiple employer plan team. I've been in my current role, I guess, about two-ish years. Um, prior to this, I was a relationship manager. So I was working side-by-side -side with mostly independent um, K through 12 schools, which this was just a natural kind of transition into that role. I've been at TIAA for eight years. Prior to that, I worked at Vanguard. So I'm pretty familiar with your territory in that greater Philly area. Um, I'm joined here today by my colleagues. Um, well, I guess they don't work with me, but they work alongside me. Um, Wade Connor and Bob Gibson. Um, Wade, do you want to go next and give a little background about yourself? Sure, sure. Thanks, Amika. And uh, thanks, Yanni, for kicking this off. Really happy to be here. Um, my name's Wade Connor. I'm with Pentegra Retirement Services. Um, we are the fiduciary administrator for the Advis Multiple Employer Plan. Um, I've been with Pentegra since 2008 and been in the retirement services um, industry since 2000. So really my entire career uh, has been dedicated to uh, working with plan sponsors and helping participants better uh, prepare for retirement. So. Um, Look forward to uh, going through an overview of the multiple employer plan and uh, at, you know, offering an opportunity to answer any questions you may have. With that, I'll let Bob introduce himself before we get started. Thanks, Wade. I'm Bob Gibson. I'm with PensionMark. PensionMark will serve as the 338 investment manager to the Advis MEP. Um, in addition to that, we'll be promoting a holistic financial wellness program for every participant in the MEP. Um, I've been working with retirement plans for, say, over 20 years. Uh, I'm a licensed registered investment advisor, um, born and raised in Philadelphia, so very familiar with the area and the schools. And um, actually coming to you today from the Inn at Villanova, where I am uh, having a <laughs> seminar at 1130. So I am local. And uh, happy to meet and have a cup of coffee with anybody who's interested in talking. So thank you. Thank you, Bob. And with that, I will share my screen and we'll get started here. Let me know if everybody can see that okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So quick agenda for, for this session. We're going to be obviously talking about a multiple employer plan. Uh, you may have questions about what that means. Hopefully when we get through with this, um, this session, you'll have a real clear understanding of what they are, how they work, why schools would look to join them and some of the benefits that are that, that come along with the Advis MEP. Um, we're gonna talk about basic construction. We're gonna explain our roles. Uh, Amica, Bob, and myself will go into detail about what our firms do and how they serve the multiple employer plan. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the investments <clears throat> and Bob's gonna spend some time talking about the financial wellness. And then we'll give you kind of a glimpse of what um, the economies of scale might provide for your schools. Um, and we obviously would love an opportunity to, to talk to you individually about how the MEP would look and feel for your faculty and staff. So with that, some of the key concerns that you probably have as a plan sponsor, sponsoring a 403B um, are mostly around fiduciary responsibilities. That's been a hot topic in the industry these days. Um, Plan sponsors <clears throat> sometimes don't have a clear understanding of, of what their risk and responsibilities are relative to maintaining the plan, ensuring the plan's administered in accordance to the plan document, you know, overseeing investments, and just looking out for the best interests of plan participants. 
Um, another area that's that's of, of concern that I think the MEP does a great job addressing is just managing the costs associated with the plan. Um, I mentioned administration. <clears throat> that's usually where I'd say 90% of the issues that come up in retirement plans are administrative in nature. So I think the MEP will, you'll see how it can really help outsource a lot of that administration. Um, and then of course, the key reason to offer a retirement plan is to just ensure that participants are saving enough and they're gonna be ready for retirement and meet their income replacement goals in retirement. And of course, last but not least, you, you need to have a, you know, a robust benefit to attract and retain employees. So let's talk about what a MEP is. Um, so MEPs are nothing new. Uh, they come from Internal Revenue Code 413C, established somewhere in the early 1930s. Um, they are essentially a plan design that allows for a single plan document under ERISA. <clears throat> ERISA is the Employee Retirement Income Securities Act, founded in 1974, essentially a set of rules that governs retirement plans. And a single plan document is, is really the, the center point of the MEP. And then each adopting employer would, would essentially choose their own provisions, how they want their plan designed, um, the benefits, the eligibility, you know, the exclusions, you know, whatever plan design and its individual provisions that a school has they can still maintain that within the multiple employer plan. And the adoption agreement or joinder agreement is, is essentially how they do that. Um, in the eyes of the IRS, it's, it's one form 5,500, so one tax filing for the multiple employer plan. So individual schools are relieved of having to complete their own 5,500. And then also from a financial standpoint, there's one plan audit for the overall MEP. So if an individual school is currently an audit plan, uh, when they join the MEP, <clears throat> that audit will go away. Uh, so that can be not only a cost savings, but a labor savings event for that individual school. From, um, from a pooling standpoint, I think Yanni alluded to this, you know, MEPs really create economies of scale. They allow for individual adopting employers to join together, combine their assets, to get better purchasing power. Um, in, a, in addition to that, it allows for individual professional firms like Pension Mark, TIA, and Pentegra to take on fiduciary responsibilities at a lower cost than they otherwise would be able to offer them. Um, because again, we're talking about joining together um, many different schools with a large accumulation of assets. And so we can drive we can drive down the cost for that professional fiduciary outsourcing. From a governance standpoint, um, a single employer plan like you probably sponsor today, you know you're the plan sponsor. You're probably over responsible for the investments <clears throat> um, in the MEP. That governance is taken on by the board that is comprised of users. So individual schools that are adopting the ADVIS multiple employer plan would serve on a board governing um, the plan and overseeing the service providers, which are TIA, Pension Mark, and Pentegra. So we answer to the, the board and the governance structure is set up in a manner that the individual schools are no longer responsible for the monitoring of the service providers. And then last but not least, enhanced services to participants. This is something that Bob's team will deliver. Um, I think the MEP, again, offers the economies of scale to drive down the cost to offer a very robust financial wellness program. Obviously more cost effective in a multiple employer plan, as I alluded to before, than, than having these services as a single employer plan like you're structured today. <clears throat> Again, the buying power of having access to lower cost investments and the enhanced financial wellness. And then not to be um, understated, TIA will provide record keeping cost reductions for individual schools that join the MEP. 
Um, their job becomes much easier when they have Pentegra in charge of the 316 administration. Um, and then Bob's team overseeing the investments and they can focus on solely record keeping the plan. So they're, they're passing along cost savings, which again, drives down costs for individual schools. So talking a little bit more about the governance, um, today you would sponsor your own plan um, in the MEP. It has to be a 501c3. In this case, ADVIS will become the plan sponsor. Um, and then I mentioned the boards in control <clears throat> of overseeing the, the MEP itself and then monitoring the service providers, which are TIA, Pentegra, and PensionMark. And then the named fiduciaries are the board, uh, PensionMark, and Pentegra. So this is kind of an illustration of how the MEP board oversees all of these service providers. You can see that PensionMark in addition to offering 338 investment management services, which takes the investment fiduciary responsibility off of the individual school's plate, that's to oversee the fund lineup. In addition to that, they also provide participant education and financial wellness to the faculty and staff. Pentegra steps in and takes on the role of the 316 administrator. Uh, 316 simply is the section of ERISA where it talks about the responsibilities of the administrator. Typically, that's an individual at the school, oftentimes the HR director or CFO, and that person is essentially responsible for ensuring the plans administered in accordance to the plan document. Uh, with Pentegra in the multiple employer plan, we're taking that responsibility away from the school and leaving the school with a short list of responsibilities. Um, most plan documents point to the administrator being responsible for a specific task. Um, 50 chores is usually the way we describe it, but most plan documents probably have somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 70 places where it will pinpoint exactly what an administrator is responsible for. So long list of tasks that schools will no longer be responsible for in the MEP. And then of course, Tia will remain the record keeper. I'll let Amika give a little bit of background on Tia, if you don't mind, yeah, Amika. Absolutely. Um, so TIA, just to give you guys background for those of you who may not use us, um, we, were start, we were founded over a hundred years ago um, by Andrew Carnegie with a mission to get educators to and through retirement. At that point, there was no such thing as pension plans and things of that nature. And so he started TIA with a grant of a million dollars, um, and it's grown into what we are today. So right now, we've got about $1.2 trillion in assets under management that continues to grow. Um, we serve all 50 states, um, including Puerto Rico and a couple um of the territories that we've got. Um, and we've got over 15,000 institutions. And the vast majority of that is really in the K through 12 space and the higher ed space. Um, but everyone that we cover would be deemed a non-for-profit institution. Thanks, Amika. Yeah, it was an obvious choice when, you know, about 15 years ago when we started conversations with TIAA about launching multiple employer plans, um, it, was, it was a very natural fit, obviously, because TIAA already record keeps the majority of not-for-profit uh, retirement plans in the United States. So they were, they were an easy choice. Um, I'm now gonna talk a little bit more. I alluded to um, the administration that you know, you as a plan sponsor are responsible for today. So if you look on the left column here, there's obviously a lot of items, you know, related to plan administration from signing and filing the 5500 to overseeing the plan documents, um, reviewing certain notices and disclosures. These are all things that if you have a third party administrator, you may be getting help with some of these things. If you don't have a third party administrator, then you're solely relying on TIAA to help you with some of these. The only point I would make here is that, you know, most service providers are ministerial in nature, which means that 
they will do the blocking and tackling. But from a fiduciary perspective, ensuring that these items get done and get done accurately and timely still falls on the plan sponsor or the administrator in this case. So in the MEP, Pentegra is willing to take on fiduciary responsibility for all these items. Um, and as adopting employer schools move into the multiple employer plan, they're simply responsible for making timely, complete and accurate payroll contributions, um, providing us census data. And that is really it. Um, everything related to loans, hardships, distributions, fee disclosures, all of these items here on the left hand side really become Pentegra's responsibility. And our service agreement is very explicit as to our um, responsibility for these specific tasks. I'm now going to let Bob chime in and talk about the investment role that Pension Mark serves in, both on the 338 side as well as the financial wellness to the faculty and staff. Sure, thank you. So, Pension Mark, uh, Pension Mark was established in 1988, really with the sole purpose of providing fiduciary investment advisory services and plan consulting to retirement plans. Um, we don't do anything else. We're specialists. Uh, this is what we do. And again, I've been working in this role over 20 years now. Um, so we would serve as a 338 investment manager, meaning we take full fiduciary responsibility for creating the investment menu, for monitoring the investment menu, for running quarterly reviews, and making any investment replacements that we think we need to make if certain mutual funds are not performing the way we'd like them to perform, meeting peer groups and benchmarks and things like that. But we take full responsibility for that. We still run quarterly reviews, we'll report to the board. Um, we just really have discretion to make investment changes. So the board's aware, all the notices will go out to participants, Integra takes care of that. Um, so pretty much operating in a way, probably similar if you have an investment advisor now, similar, we just take on full responsibility and have discretion to make those changes. Um, our investment scale, we had 77 billion. That was as of December, 2022. I think they're updating now since it's the end of the quarter. We're at about 80 billion in assets under advisement nationally. Um, we'll deliver an investment policy statement to the board. The fund selection is essentially done at this point. Again, quarterly investment reviews. We will benchmark the plan from a fee perspective so as the plan grows, um, there will be certain points where we'll benchmark as the assets grow, our fee will be adjusted, TSP may be adjusted. We're going to act in a full fiduciary capacity. And part of that is ensuring that the fees are reasonable according to DOL guidelines. Okay, what comes Just next? to chime in really quick, Bob, our fee yep. does, does get adjusted. So, Right. I knew that. Um, it's, I didn't want to jump ahead too far. No, it's, yes, you're, are, you're, you're okay saying that. So, um, We want to talk really quickly about Retire Plus. Uh, some of you that have TIA now may have been hearing about this. Um, a lot are not. Retire Plus is what we're going to use as the target date fund um, in the map. It's really a model. We build the models. People have the ability to select models, not select models. Um, we think it's in their best interest to utilize the professionally managed models that are built primarily out of index funds. So they're very inexpensive to own. The, the big thing about Retire Plus is most teachers have some form of TIA traditional. You know, they have that TIA traditional. Uh, they may have had it at a plan prior to moving to your school. They may have it with your school. And in a typical target date fund, which I like, by the way, you know, Vanguard target date funds, TIA target date funds even, uh, pick any one of them. They really don't take into account that investment. So there could be a very significant portion of kind of a fixed account that is not taken into account when they pick a target date fund. Retire Plus does. TIA's record keeping system combined with our models has the ability to recognize how much tea traditional does somebody have? How much fixed money do they have? And then adjust their portfolio knowing that. So if somebody has a significant uh, tea traditional balance, which is fixed and very conservative, 
their model may have some other really aggressive index funds, knowing that they have it. Um, and it will trace back to even a previous employer in TIA's website. So if they were with another school and they had TIA traditional, the Retire Plus custom target date funds know that. And they take that into account when they build the model. I think it's a critical difference between, particularly with TIA, and I will say one other thing in our world, even in the corporate side, people are leaning towards, can we solve for guaranteed retirement income? TIA has been doing this for years. So it's a really good fit for us and it's a very good fit for these custom models. Wait, do you want to just go to the next one? Yeah. Participant education and guidance. So what? Um, one of the reasons why I'm really enjoying being with Pension Mark is they really built in a financial wellness program, a holistic financial wellness program. It's not just retirement education. It can be retirement education if that's what someone would like to use it for. But we really built it with two prongs. One is digital, online, smart technology. Everything's in there. We have Smart Map University if they want to take some mini courses and just learn about some financial topics. If they want to use retirement calculators, debt reduction calculators, everything is on that portal for them. But we've coupled that with access to licensed financial advisors. So 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday, they can call an 800 number. They can get somebody on the phone. They can schedule a Zoom call on the website with an advisor. They can go home, sit with their spouse, partner, college student, um, schedule a call to talk about student loan debt, schedule a call really to talk about anything they'd like with a licensed financial advisor. Um, another really critical component the advisors are not salespeople, they're not commissioned, they're not selling product. So if somebody wants to change their life insurance situation, maybe they bought a bigger house, maybe they're having a child, getting married, whatever the case may be, a licensed advisor can talk them through life insurance, talk to them about whole life, universal life, term life, what's the best bet for them, but they're not gonna sell them a product. They're just gonna guide and advise and help them get where they need to be from a financial perspective. Over the years, the bigger question that's been coming to me from plan sponsors is not just, hey, can you take on fiduciary responsibility and do all that type of stuff that we've been hearing about for years? Yes, check all those boxes. It's been, what more can you do for, our, for my employees? What more can you do for my plan participants? And we think that this really checks that box in a very significant way. It's included and any participant in the MEP has access to the financial wellness program. Really kind of just went through this. There is a bilingual call center. Um, as I mentioned, the online financial planning is fantastic. And some people will just do that. Some people still want to get an advisor on the phone. But again, it's not just a call center. They can actually schedule a call, Zoom, share their screen, really talk about any type of financial topic that they want to talk about. Um, the participants will still have access to TIA. They want to work with TIA. They still have all those advisors available. So we're not taking anything away. We're really just adding another component to financial wellness. Um, guys, I think, Wade, I hit on all of those already. So in the interest of time, um, I think we can yeah. keep moving on. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Yep. So in closing, I'd like to kind of give you an idea um, of some of the buying, you know, the buying power of the multiple employer plan. So you, you've, you obviously, you know, are responsible for your plan today. You may or may not have um, different investment options at TIAA, assuming you're an existing TIAA client today. But this is a real live example of, you know, a plan that we took a look at. And typically when we see an existing relationship at TIAA that has some combination of TIA traditional annuities at the individual level, or maybe they already have RC contracts, retirement choice. Um, we're still seeing plan expenses somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 to 110 basis points. And that's that's including the underlying record keeping cost as well as the cost of the investments. Um, we can't, we can't disclose 
the underlying expenses for the Advis map without a non-disclosure agreement, but we would love an opportunity to speak to you individually and put together a cost comparison. So we will actually illustrate all of your existing expenses. You know, whether you have an audit, we will illustrate that if you're using an, an, an investment advisor currently today and you can disclose to us what that cost is, we'll include that in the analysis. But I think this is a helpful illustration for, you know, a typical participant. You know, what what are they going to experience? What's the impact on their ability to save for retirement over the course of their um, working years? Um, so if you if you kind of follow along, you know, starting balance of fifty thousand, assume a rate of return of seven percent. Um, again. This is fairly conservative. We've seen some higher, we've seen some lower, but a uh, ballpark of 110 basis points for record keeping plus underlying investment costs. This particular participant, if you were to compound this and take it all the way out to age 65, you would see a difference between 638,000 and 741,000 in total savings. So this is the power of the buying power and the impact that it will make at the participant level. With the that, thing, um, go ahead. The um, other thing to note, Wade, I don't know if we, we hit on this, is um, oftentimes schools will see additional savings, right? Particularly if you're a 403B plan and you do have an audit now, the audit fee gets absorbed and it's done at the MEP level. Um, so that could be a re really impactful direct savings to the school as a whole. Um, and I think you mentioned this, but typically the biggest cost savings that you're gonna see across the board is the TIA record keeping fee. So since we are able to drive our fees down by kind of spreading some of the workload um, amongst Pension Mark and Pentegra, um, we're able to significantly drop the TIA fee, which is in turn better for schools, better for plan participants, and they end up with a much more robust um, retirement plan offering, which is the ultimate goal there. Yeah, and Amika, do you want to do you want to allude to kind of the the break points uh, without maybe being too specific of you know as the Advis map grows to a certain hurdle. You know the cost is x and then once it reaches another threshold you know the there may be a, a basis point or two reduction over time yeah typically once after our first year every i think it's 100 or 150 million that we grow in total assets so that's not necessarily if you guys have legacy plans that are not eligible to join um the map they still are considered assets under the the map as a whole. And um, that's a benefit, obviously, to plan participants, but also to the plan itself, because that counts towards the breakpoints. And typically, you're going to see a one basis point reduction for each of those breakpoints. Um, as the map continues to grow, we will build out those asset tiers. Um, and um, I really see it as the great equalizer amongst retirement plans. And, you know, Lots of our larger higher eds get all the resources, all the help that they need, but the K through 12s particularly are, you know, sometimes business offices of one, sometimes two. You're lucky if you've got more than that. Um, and, you know, we know that there's a lot on your plate and this, this helps to minimize that workload, but also really offer a robust retirement plan um, with kind of the same experience for many of you guys who already use TIAA, logins would remain the same, quarterly statements would look the same. Um, and so it's a relatively passive change. For those of you who don't use TIA, it's not a major change either. What we would typically do is map assets from the other provider to your new TIAA retirement plan. Um, so... Yeah, thank you for that, Amika. And with that, I'll share our contact information. Um, obviously, this webinar is being recorded and can be distributed out to any of those that couldn't join today. Um, and with that, we will close our segment on the Advis Multiple Employer Plan.